Now, Superbase is actually known by two names. It's known as Superbase, and it's also known as the gift that keeps on giving. And that is because the more you use Superbase, the more that you discover its amazing power, and the more that you realize how much time and effort it will save you when you're building pretty much any kind of an app. Now, I've spoken a lot about Superbase on this channel, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some mind-blowing tips and tricks that I guarantee you, you're going to be using in your next app. And definitely make sure that you stick around until the end of the video, because the tip that I'm going to be showing you towards the end is an amazing, amazing tip that you're gonna put to use very, very quickly. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps and all the resources that I cover on this channel are gonna be available to view and or clone from my amazing Patreon page. And you can learn more about our amazing, rapidly growing Patreon community via the link in the description below the video. Now, in order to demonstrate to you guys some amazing things that you could do with Superbase, I went ahead and built a proof of concept app using Flutterflow, which is my favorite no-code builder right now. And so this is the app right here. And let's go ahead and run this app so that I can show you some incredible, incredible things that you can do with Superbase. All right, so we're gonna start out with a relatively simple, but still a very, very useful tip. So here I have an app here, and this particular Superbase feature allows you to create an automatic calculator. So let's say you're inputting things such as products. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new product here. So I'm gonna say product one, and I'm gonna say the price is 100 and the tax is 25%. Now, when I click on add product, it's going to go ahead and calculate the final price automatically. And this is done inside of Superbase. This is not done by Flutterflow. Let's go ahead and add another product. Product two, let's say the price is 15 and let's say the tax is 10%. We're going to click on add product. And now this is the initial price and this is the total price with tax. Okay, the tax being 10% which ends up being 1 1.5, 15 plus 1 1.5, you get 16.5. Let's do one final test. Let's say I'm buying another product, product three. Okay, very, very original, I know. And let's say the price is 500 and the tax is 25. Okay, I'm going to click on add product. And there's the product entry here, the product record, and the initial price is 500. And the total sum is 6 25 and obviously i can continue adding more and more products and we're going to see this calculation happen automatically so how exactly is this done well let's go into our super base so that i can show you what's happening so here's our products table and as you can see we have three records here okay so we have the name we have the base price and we have the tax here this is the tax rate expressed as a fraction from zero to one okay so if you want to know the percentage just multiply it by 100 and this is the final price here now this final price is calculated automatically because this is a generated field this is not a regular field this is a generated field and creating these kinds of tables with generated fields is very very simple and straightforward and this is the sql that i use to create this table so as you can see i'm saying create table products i specify the id the name the base price and the tax rate so these four are standard fields okay this last one is a so-called generated field okay so this final price it's still numeric but it's generated and it's using this formula here and when you're creating a generated field you can reference the other fields in your tables and all i'm saying here is that the final price is really the base price multiplied by one plus the tax rate so if the tax rate is 10 percent then we get 1 plus 0.10, which is 1.10. And when you multiply it by the base price, you essentially get the end result. That's like calculating the tax rate and adding it to a particular price. And this is going to give you the final price. And it goes without saying that you can make this particular field, this generated field as simple 
or as complicated as you want and this way all that you need to worry about is providing values to these fields because this last field is going to be updated automatically okay and as you can see if we go to our app here this is this auto cal if we go to our add product we have a flow and this is the back end call and as you can see I am only specifying the name, the base price, and the tax rate. I'm not specifying the final price because when we create this insert row operation, the final price will be calculated automatically by Superbase. And when we refresh our database request, we see the final price because all of this data is automatically refreshed. So a very, very nifty feature that i can see using all the time in my apps and this way i don't need to worry about completing this logic in my app i can simply do it in superbase and forget about it now the next amazing superbase feature that i want to show you is too amazing to talk about it you have to see it in practice so what i have here is a booking system okay so i can enter a room I can select the from date and the to date, and then I can click on book. Okay, so let's say I want to book room number 10, and let's say I want to book uh, starting from January 10 to January 17, so something like for a week. So once I have all of this uh, data here reflected, I can click on book, and that's gonna go ahead and create a new record. So as you can see, now we have room number 10 is booked from Wednesday, January 10 to Wednesday, January 17. Now I can book another room. Let's say I want to book a room number 11 and I want to book it for the following week, okay? From the 17th to the 24th, okay? So now we see 11, 17, 24, click on book. And that is also successful. Now let's say somebody comes in and they want to book room number 10 for a specific date range that overlaps with this existing booking date range, okay? So let's say somebody comes in and they want to book from 10th to 13th and as you can probably already realize this should not be possible because room number 10 is already booked for that week right it's already booked for the entire week starting uh, from january 10th to january 17th so this should not be possible and if i click on book that's gonna fail it's not gonna allow it to do and the same thing with room 11 so if i enter room 11 and let's say I want to book it from 17 to 22. Actually, let's put 17 and let's put 22. Okay, now as you can see, room 11 is booked from January 17 to January 24. So similarly to the previous operation, this should not be allowed either. So we're going to click on book and as you can see, nothing happens. Now, of course, I can book room number 11 for a different time frame. So let's say 25 to... 31 maybe okay that should work right because room number 11 is not booked for these for this date range so if i click on book guess what we see we see that this is now successful now contrary to what you might think this particular logic is not being done in our app level it's not being done in flutterflow this is being done in superbase and it's being done automatically so let me show you exactly what's happening so let's go ahead back to our uh, Superbase dashboard. And if I click on bookings, we have our table here. And as you can see, we have all of these records here, right? So we have the row ID, we have the room ID, we have the start time and the end time, okay? So all of this is saved here, but how exactly does it validate, right? How does it allow a new booking if there's no um, if there's no conflict? And how does it not allow a new booking if there's a conflict? Well, that is done automatically by Superbase. And all this is done using a very, very powerful Superbase feature. So this is our booking table here. So just like with the previous example, these are our fields, okay? We have the ID, which is the record ID. We have the room ID. We have the start time and the end time. Now, what follows here are special instructions that tell Superbase to validate future bookings against existing bookings. So what we are doing is we're saying exclude if room ID is equal to a previous room ID and the time range falls within existing time range all of this logic is done using this simple statement because if you were going to implement this logic inside of your app 
it's going to be a little bit more complex. So why do it? Why create this logic from scratch? Why reinvent the wheel when you can simply use existing Superbase functionality to do this logic for you? And obviously, this is just one example of the kind of powerful validation that you can do inside of your apps. If you browse Superbase documentation, you can learn more about the different ways, the different operators that you can use to validate new data against existing data. Now, obviously, I don't really need to lecture you on the different application use cases for this particular feature, because this is going to be standard for any kind of an app that you're gonna be building that requires the user to book for specific days so things like airbnb things like car booking things like you know booking with a freelancer maybe booking for a haircut or booking for a consultation call any kind of an app that needs booking but also needs to make sure that there's no conflicts with people booking for the same dates as were previously booked you can put this amazing super base feature to use now this next super underrated super base feature allows you to add amazing search capabilities to your app so check this out i have a table that contains various articles and with this feature you can easily create a search engine that will allow your users to search the content in a particular table so in my table i have various travel articles so let's say i want to search for nyc press enter and here we have various results in this case this is one article called life in nyc and this is the beginning of the content let's say we type tokyo and see some results so here we have an article the best street foods in tokyo explore the vibrant and diverse street food culture of Tokyo. Let's say I type Bali, okay? And here we have an article, a guide to the beaches of Bali, experience the serene and beautiful beaches of Bali. Now, how exactly is this working? Well, let's go jump into my Superbase dashboard. And I have this table called A Block Post. And this is a very, very simple table. We have the record ID, the post ID, which is the primary key. We have the title and then we have the content. And last but not least, we have something called a TS vector content. And this field here is responsible for making your content, making the other fields in your table search friendly. Okay, it creates this index that allows the system to easily search for the content in this table. So now here's how you initially feed data into your table. So remember the title and the content is just regular text, right? It's it, these are regular strings. So we have a list of records here. So things like exploring the hidden gems of Paris, you know, discover the less known but enchanting attractions of Paris. But when it comes to this last field, right, the so-called index that makes your whole um, content search friendly, you have to use this special function called 2TS vector. Then you specify the language and then you specify the content. And when all of this is executed by Superbase, it creates this special search friendly content. And as, and as a result, your table is gonna look like this. So you're gonna have this regular content here, and then you're gonna have this TS vector content that's gonna look something like this here, okay? And this is going to allow your system to quickly and easily search for your content. Now, you may be wondering, how exactly is search performed when it comes to these articles here? Because we're definitely not doing a simple query and filtering the content by the specific text. We're actually doing real searching. Well, the way that we are doing searching here is we are using this TS vector to search various content. And in order to send our queries from the app, we are using something called Superbase functions. So if I click on database, I have this functions area here. So if I select functions here, I can create something called Superbase functions. And a Superbase function is just like any other function, except that it works on your Superbase tables and on your Superbase data. And so here we have two functions here. This is a function I'm going to be covering in just a little bit. 
but the function that does the searching is called search block post and if you take a look at this function here what this function is doing is it's executing a special query that uses this ts vector content and it also supports phrase searching right so you can search for a specific phrase and you'll be able to find various results, right? So we're not doing some dumb searching. We're not doing some dumb filtering by words or by sentences or anything like that. We're actually using rather sophisticated search technology. And once you create this Superbase function, you can access it as an API from your external apps. And so if you take a look at the API documentation, you have all of your tables, but if you scroll down, you also have something called stored procedures, which is essentially another name for Superbase functions. So this is our function here, and you can easily access this function via an API. And this function accepts a search query that is passed by the user via the app, and it gives back all of the results. And so if we go back to our Flutterflow app, this is the example right here, this third page called search engine. And so when the user types something in there and they press enter, we are going to be executing this on submit action here. And it's going to execute this entire flow. And essentially what we're doing is we're doing a backend call via the API that calls our Superbase function. And so if I head over to my APIs here, I have two API calls because I'm using two functions one that i'm showing you right now and the second one that i'm going to be showing in just a few moments but this function right here is called search table and this is an api interface to the function that i just showed you some moments ago and this function accepts this json object here with a search query and the search term and our search term is a variable here and this way when the user searches for anything we can execute this api call using the input that the user gives and so essentially all we're doing is executing this api call that calls the superbase function which in turn dynamically queries the table using this special feature called ts vector in order to give us back high quality results and once this api call is successful we simply update page state to tell the app that api called is now true which means that we want to show this second part of the page and as you can see it's all conditional right this container is conditional based on whether api called is true or false so if it's true that means that we should have data back this is going to be active now if it's false this is not going to be active and so as a result when we first load the page there's nothing here because we haven't called the API. But if I type Bali, press enter, now it's true. And as a result, it's going to show you the search results here. So a very, very powerful feature. And in fact, this is something that I would recommend that you use anytime that you need any kind of search functionality in your app. Instead of using Flutterflow's built-in on-device search, just leverage Superbase's search functionality. It's very, very powerful, and it's available for your tables immediately, right? It's essentially free feature for your existing data. Highly, highly recommended, and I hope you guys are going to be using it more in your apps. Now, this last feature that I want to show you is probably my favorite, and when you guys see this feature, you're probably going to be as impressed as I am, if not even more. So here we have a page here with a map of New York City, more specifically Manhattan, and this map is centered on Empire State Building. Now, above the map, we have a slider, and this slider represents a radius around the starting point, so a radius radius around Empire State Building. And so if you increase the slider, you're going to be increasing the radius. And as a result, you're going to be seeing different points, things like landmarks, bars, coffee shops, restaurants, etc., etc., that are a certain distance from Empire State Building. In other words, a certain distance from our center point and so right now we are looking at places that are 500 meters or less from empire state building now if i decrease the radius to zero we're only going to have one point and that is because we have a landmark there which is 
an Empire State Building coffee shop that's located exactly at the same location as the Empire State Building. And that's it. There are no other places that are zero or less, basically at the same location as the Empire State Building. But if I increase it to, let's say, 200, we are going to be seeing more and more places. So as you can see, three new places popped up. If I make it to 300, we see another place that has popped up because now we're looking at places that are 300 meters or less from the Empire State Building. Now, if I increase it to 400, we have another place. But if I increase it to 1000, we are going to be seeing more and more places, essentially all the places in our table, because all the places in our table are a thousand meters or less, so essentially a kilometer or less from the Empire State Building. Now, in case you didn't notice, this whole page, this whole flow is fully dynamic because as I'm dragging this, this is being recalculated automatically. So not only the radius is being recalculated based on the slider value here, but also the number of results is being recalculated automatically. So if I go to zero, we have one result, zero. If I go to you know, 1000 meters, we have nine results. If I go to 200 meters, we're going to have four results. If I go to 300 meters, we're going to have five results. If I go back to, you know, a thousand meters, we're going to have nine results. Okay. So this is fully dynamic. And you got to admit, this is an awesome app that you can have in your arsenal. If you're building something similar, if you're building an app for your users, that needs to show various places, landmarks, coffee shops, restaurants, etc., etc., based on a specific location, whether it is a location that the user specified or a location where the user exists right now. Essentially, their current GPS location. Now, the dynamic stuff here is done with the help of Flutterflow, but the actual calculation where we determine whether to display a particular restaurant based on the radius that the user has specified is done automatically by Superbase. So let me show you exactly what's happening behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and jump back to our Superbase, go to our tables here, and the table that we're looking at is this A restaurants. Now, if we pop open this table, we're going to see a list of landmarks. And as you can see, most of these, if not all of these, are restaurants. We have a deli, we have a grill, we have a barbecue, a coffee shop, a pub, etc., etc. And, and right here, all we are storing are, you know, your standard things, right? Your standard fields. So we have the primary key, we have the name, we have the address. And what we have here is a special super base field that allows us to do some amazing magic regarding its location. And if we take a look at how this table was created, you can see that we are using three fields that are fairly standard, right? So we have the primary key, we have the name, we have the address, but here is where we are using a custom field called geography. And with this custom field, you can do amazing things having to do with distance, with places, with geography, calculating based on radius, distance, etc., etc. Now, here you can see how I inserted my initial sample of data into this table. So we have an insert statement. And so for name and address, I am just inserting various places, okay? This is just text. But for location, we're using something called stMakePoint that takes as its arguments the coordinates, right? So we're passing the longitude and the latitude for each of the records and when we do that it's able to encode the exact location for each of these records and once it encodes the exact location using the coordinates here we can ask it various things we can you know do various calculations we can figure out the distances the radiuses all of that and this right here is what a sample query looks like okay so what i'm doing is i'm saying give me the name address and the location of all the places that are 1000 meters or less from this point here okay so if i run this query 
I'm going to be getting these results here. So as you can see, it's all the places because all of these places are next to each other and they're also next to the point. If I make this a hundred, we should see just one place. And that place is this Empire State Delhi. And that is because this place is located exactly at the same location that the Empire State Building itself is located. This is the Empire State Delhi. And as you can see, it's zero meters away from the main location. That is why when we have this app, and we put it to zero, we're always gonna be seeing this one, one point here. And if I put something like 500 meters, meaning I want all the places that are located within 500 meters from this point, I'm gonna be getting these results here. And if I put 1000, I'm gonna be getting more results. And so if I put something like 10,000 meters, which is, which is 10 kilometers, assuming that all of these places are fairly close to the initial place, I'm gonna be seeing all of these places, right? Because they're fairly close to each other, they're kind of bunched together. And so with this query, we can do some amazing, amazing things. Now there is one issue with using this query in our app, and that is the fact that this argument here is gonna be dynamic, right? This argument, is going to be submitted by the user, right? So remember, we have the slider that is essentially submitting uh, the distance, right? Submitting the radius. So as we drag the slider, the radius changes. And so anytime you have a query that needs to be made dynamic by a value that can always be changing depending on what the user wants, that's how you know that you need to turn this query into a super base function that can accept a radius parameter from the outside and replace this static value with a dynamic argument and so that is exactly what i did so if you come back to our database click on functions I created a second super base function called get nearby restaurants and it takes an argument called radius meters which is an integer and it returns a table of different values that are essentially places landmarks that are within a specific radius from a specific point and if you click here edit function you can see this function here and as you can see it's the same query except we are not setting a static value right so we had a thousand in our query in this case we are passing an argument called radius meters and we are setting it here that way this argument is going to be place dynamically in our query and as a result we can execute it via an api call so this is our last example here and so what's happening here is as the user is dragging this right so if you click on the slider this is our slider we open this up and unselect it which means that unchanged right anytime you drag the slider we're going to be updating page state but we're also going to be executing an API call. And this API call is called get nearby places. And we're going to be sending this distance that the user uh, is specified via the slider, right? So as the user is dragging the slider, that distance is changing. Now with sliders, uh, they pass the distance, they pass that value as a float. So we're using a code expression to round that float into an integer, right? So if you recall, a float is something with a decimal point, whereas an integer is a whole number. And so we need to convert a float into an integer so that we can pass it to our uh, super base function, okay? And once we do that, we get back a list of restaurants and we automatically display them here. And so I'm using Google Maps here. This is actually built in with Flutterflow. You need to get your API key from Google once you do that you can simply use places here and this is exactly what we get back from our api call and so if we go back to our superbase here and we go to our we go to our sql editor here when we execute the superbase function we get back the results and so knowing the results i can grab the coordinates and place them on the map and so as the user is dragging the slider we are continuously making api calls and automatically updating the map so as you can see if we come over here we are getting new results using that super base function we get different results and we're automatically updating this map so if we come over here we are up updating the map if we come over here we are automatically updating the map. And so this dynamic behavior is made possible with Flutterflow and also it's made possible with this amazing 
super base functionality that allows you to store locations in a very very special format and then do all kinds of interesting calculations using simple queries right exactly how you would do if you just have simple tables simple data except here we are able to do some amazing calculations so that we get back the data that specifies this radius condition here now i gotta say that was a lot to unpack lots and lots of powerful functionality courtesy of superbase some cool effects courtesy of flutterflow and if i had to guess many of you probably didn't even know that you can do these things with superbase and guess what you can do it with superbase and i recommend to all of you if you're using superbase as your backend to consider using superbase for a lot of things that you're doing in your app builder because superbase has this functionality for free and all you need to do is leverage it now the best way to leverage what i demonstrated in today's video is being able to view and or clone this exact app because when you do that you're gonna have this exact app in front of you so you're gonna see exactly how i did everything here and you gotta admit a lot of the things that i built here you can easily include in your existing app or maybe in an app that you're planning to build in the future or maybe you just want to see how i did it well it's a lot easier instead of me explaining it to you to see it for yourself to play around with it to see how it works and later on when you're ready to build an app you can easily implement this functionality in your app and save lots of time and even lots of money and you'll be able to easily do that when you join our amazing patreon community because when you join our amazing patreon community you're not only going to get full access to this app you're also going to get full access to all the apps that i built on this channel and they're probably over 150 or 160 or even more apps by now there are tons and tons of apps that do all kinds of different things uh regardless if you're building a simple app or a more complex app chances are i've done it before and chances are i'm going to be doing in the future and when you are a member of our amazing patreon community you're going to have access to all my apps as well as any of the future apps that I'm going to be building in these videos tutorials. But that's not all. When you join our amazing Patreon community, you're also going to get access to some extra content such as Q&As, live streams, behind the scenes content and our Patreon supported Patreon exclusive masterclass series where I do deep dives on various topics that the community is interested in and so if you're looking to level up your no code game you're looking to take your no code knowledge to the next level then joining our amazing patreon community is going to be one of the best investments that you'll be able to make and of course when you join our amazing patreon community you're going to be supporting this channel and supporting my work and that is greatly greatly appreciated and so if any of that sounds like it's going to provide you with some level of value then i highly encourage you to check out our amazing patreon community and consider becoming a member and you can do just that via the link in the description below the video